Hello! You got your coffee or your tea? Your sketchbook, most important? Welcome to Draw Tip Tuesday. My name is Koosje Koene. I love drawing and that's what I do here on this channel. And I really hope that with the things that I learn and share here, uh, it can be useful for your creative journey too. And today I have a really fun exercise. It's easy, well, sort of simple at least, and uh, quick too. So even if you think you don't have time, you really do. So let's get going. At the end of January, I taught a workshop weekend together with my friend Sabine Wisman. And it was in the south of the Netherlands, in Maastricht. We had a fantastic group and it was a beautiful weekend. And one of the workshop locations was in Centre Ceramique. The library is there. And also they had this fantastic exhibition of portrait photography from the 40s and 50s. And these were all faces from people living in Maastricht at that time. It was so much fun to draw from the walls and walls of faces. But also the funny thing is, I found some family there because my family is from the south of the Netherlands. So I picked a few of the photos that I found, two of my grandmother and one of my aunt. There was more family, but these are the portraits I want to work from today. The photos of the portraits are really bad, badly lit and all that, but that doesn't matter because it's about drawing. It's not about taking a photo of a photo, is it? I'm using an Ecoline brush marker, but you can use watercolors or gouache or anything that you can quickly put a bold color and shape down on the paper. I'm looking at the portraits, but won't actually look at any details. It's important to keep the speed in this so that you don't start to draw with the tip of the marker, which is very tempting. You're just filling out a shape, a general shape that you see. For the general shape, Look at how the head is tilted and also the direction of the shoulders, if there's difference in height, that kind of thing. Now I am grabbing another fun tool, which is quite blunt too. It's a woody pencil. They look like kids' tools, and they kind of are, but actually they're pretty brilliant pencils. They feel like thick and soft crayons on the paper. They're water soluble too, so you can watercolor with them. And they come in many bright colors, and even though I don't use them that often, they are so much fun to play with. Now, I'll start looking at the details a bit more, but still, I'm not going to try and capture a resemblance. That's quite impossible with the blunt tool in my hand. So instead, I look at the characteristics of the portrait and try to simplify and abbreviate. Sometimes it helps to exaggerate certain facial features or accessories too. Next photo, I'll grab a different color. Using a different color will make this page even more playful, but it also teaches me about color and if certain combinations work well or not. So do not forget that with every bit of experience you do in your sketchbook, you are teaching yourself something even if you don't know exactly what it is yet. Can you imagine what you miss out on if you're not making time to draw? You're missing out on learning experiences. Your inner critic might tell you that you'll mess up the page or that it's dumb to draw from photos or that the faces you'll draw won't look like the actual people anyway, so why even bother? You got this. Push those inner critic thoughts away and put down that blob of color quickly before you can even think. Draw that face on top, even when it looks wonky or weird, or your drawing turns out to be a bad drawing. I don't think this page is a particular awesome page in my sketchbook, but I very much enjoyed the process. I discovered again that I love the color combination of red on top of yellow or ochre, but I love the purplish blue very much too. I enjoyed the pictures I took on my phone, which otherwise I may have forgotten about. And it makes me smile again, thinking about the wonderful exhibition these pictures were part of. Plus, a bonus here is that I drew some family, even if they don't look anything like the photos. 
Doing this kind of playful, fun exercise really helps you to loosen up when you're drawing from observation, but just loosen up in general in your sketchbook. But also when you draw outside on location and you want to draw people in real life, these kinds of exercises at home really help you to train to look at faces and to get those features and to exaggerate where you can or want to. So this exercise is really great practice too, but hey, you just end up with something really fun and colorful. And yeah, that's worth something too. I hope you had fun. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to buy my book. Life is better when you draw it. You know it. And if you don't have a copy yet, you know you want one. So find the link below this video. Other stuff to mention is definitely my Patreon page. You can support me to keep making these videos weekly. And of course, my workshops. I do monthly online sessions, which are really, really fun but also you can learn from me in person. Links are all below in the description of this video. I will see you next week. Bye.